Driving Ivan here at Auto World. You might think I'm at like uh, sort of a uh, fine art museum in the middle of Europe, and in a way, I am actually. Look at the surroundings, just amazing. And I uh, hope you'll smash that like button and subscribe. I'm going to show you all the cars here at Auto World in Brussels, Belgium. Let's get started. We'll start things off here with the James Bond collection. Cars used in the film, and uh, yeah, this one looks uh, pretty authentic with its uh, gun barrels, and uh, <laughs> it's awesome, wouldn't you say? Wow, 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 wow. Auto world. I mean, come on. I have uh, two Aston Martin reviews that you can watch, a Vantage V8S. And also a DB9 uh, V12 with a uh, six-speed manual transmission. So that's pretty cool. The James Bond cars used in the film and, uh, as you can see, crashed in some instances. Wow. Very cool. The Espada is a uh, weapon. A sword. This is a 71 Series 2, it looks like. Do check out my interview with Valentino Balboni at the factory. That's a cool video. I think you'll like it. But uh, this one's worth a walk around. I just think it's beautiful. I love these uh, shooting brakes, as they're called. Like the two-door, basically, wagon. I have a Lotus Europa that fits that description. But anyway, two-door two wagon is a shooting brake. Popular in um, England. They even have some Aston Martins that were built in Jags that were built and uh, Used for hunting and that sort of thing very very cool uh, This one is a 78 Renault 16 TX. I love uh, the way this you know You just have a spattering of everything. There's that Testarossa in front with the auto world on it greeting you Volkswagen Corrado uh, Very cool is that um I don't think it's a Myers Manx. Not sure what this is. Joel. So I don't know what that is, but um, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Manual transmission, four seater Lamborghini. About as good as it gets, in my eyes, for a Lamborghini. And uh, what do we got here? Some oldies but goodies. Word on the street in terms of the uh, Aston Martin is that uh, he gets to. Uh, Whoever starring gets to drive their choice of Aston Martin. Maybe for life, but um, not sure how that works. <laughs> Original looking uh, Willie's Jeep here. This was the uh, army vehicle. You see him in MASH. It's a great place to see old Jeeps. They figure a big starring role, a co-starring role at least in uh, those films. They have displays also, these small displays that show you more history. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's an interesting museum and I'm just, uh, I'm just starting. I didn't walk through or anything before. I like to give it my first impression. Looks like a Lancia Aurelia. Uh, very cool. The Aurelia of the Italians. There's a town in Italy called Aurelia. Drove through there on this European jaunt that I'm taking. This is the 2021 Super Leggera Aston Martin, in case you're wondering. So uh, there you go. I hope you've smashed that like button. And I'm also doing a series where I buy a car in Europe and travel around. And uh, I'm going to also tell you how to uh, do that. Buy a car, license it, travel around, and uh, then I'll be importing it too. Maybe more than one car. Who knows? I've already revealed what I bought and what I'm driving right now. Check that out. Uh, you can see my lap on the Nürburgring, and that's really, really awesome. A bucket list thing for me, driving my own car on the Nürburgring. So cool. But uh, let's continue this wonderful tour of Auto World. Have you smashed that like button yet? Wow. Mahi, a family of cars. 
Things to look forward to, they're doing a retrospective of the Corvette. That's upstairs. They have that wild European collection of the guy that owns like over a thousand cars. It's up there. I'll take you there. And they're unrestored, which makes them super cool. Wow. It's uh, dizzying how many cool cars they have in here, actually. And bikes, too. BSA. 1925. Auto World on the license plate. That's cool. A 1928 Bentley 3 liter. Well, 3L, 4.5 liter, actually. Strike that. What a beast. What a beauty. Look at this. Ooh. That is just lovely, isn't it? Now we're talking Lotus Esprit. I do have a Lotus Esprit later version. The one from the Pretty Woman movie, basically. 88 Turbo. Uh, maybe there's one in the museum here. I'm not sure. Look at that. It's an actual Corvette pace car. Wrapped in the Corvette pace car uh, box. Like it's a model. That is so cool. Oh my God. I had a C3 Corvette, 1977, not a pace car, but a lovely vehicle. You can see it. It's a popular video on YouTube, so do check it out. And uh, we'll see a lot of Corvettes upstairs. Don't worry. This one is just uh, drawing me in right here. It's like a Seata, but it's not. It's a Moretti. Uh, 750 Grand Sport Berlinetta. I'm going to zoom in on this puppy a little bit. It's beautiful. Wow. Looky there. Whew. That is absolutely gorgeous. Very, very cool. What a beauty. Man. Can't say enough about that. Striking. Renault Type R4 CV. And then we have uh, Simca Aronde. And looky here, Ferrari 250 GT Boano from 1956. Ain't she lovely? She sure is. Black interior. And uh, yeah, doesn't get much better than a early, early Ferrari. That's about eight years into the company. Um, beauty. What a beauty. All right, continuing on, I'm just uh, randomly walking around and showing you. That's what I like. There's just kind of random scattered stuff around on the first floor here. Le Jamais Content. Nice. Vehicle electric de Camille Janetsky. Record of the world, 1899. 105 kilometers per hour. So there you go. Electric's been around for a long time. And there was kind of a fight at the beginning to see which one would take over uh, carbon or uh, electric. And uh, probably a good thing that uh, carbon won out at that time because the battery technology was just not there. Uh, that would have been difficult. Look at all these micro cars here. Uh, nice, nicely presented, I think. This is a very cool museum. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Tell me your favorite car. Tell me why. This is an early Prius. I'm one of the few car guys that likes the Prius. I have uh, many, many, many cars. And uh, like I said, I'm even bringing some home from Europe. But uh, you might be surprised to know that despite my collection having Porsches and Citroëns and uh, Maserati Spider and things like that. My daily driver is actually a Prius. Yes, it is. But I've also reviewed this Tesla Roadster. I reviewed the 2.5 S. Uh, when it first came out, it was a great car. And Tesla themselves called it the Millennium Falcon because it was so quick. Very cool car. Look for my full driving review on YouTube elsewhere. Just search driving and I've been in any car. Cool Tesla Roadster. Louis Motion Volkswagen Microline 1.0. If you want to pause and read all about it, there you go. This Tesla Roadster, of course, based on the Lotus 
Elise. I love the way they do this. Look at that, Bond in Motion, original collection of Bond vehicles. And then, of course, they have the model too. Oh, it's faced the wrong way. I don't know why they did that, but um, still, very cool. They got the car and they got the model. Look at all these really old and lovely, lovely vehicles. A lot of people here enjoying the museum. It's kind of a rainy day here in Brussels, Belgium. 1933 Mercedes-Benz 370S Mannheim. There you go. Mannheim's a nice city, by the way. I like it. 1940 BMW 326 4D Cabriolet Altin Wreath. Want to read about it? Go ahead and press pause. 1938 Delahaye 135 M Coupe. Yes, sir. Cars were big back then. 1930 Bugatti 49. There you go. Yes, Bugatti came from somewhere. And they've been around Vittori Bugatti for many, 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 many decades. And uh, great to see them back with uh, building the pinnacle of automobiles in terms of speed with their 16-cylinder engines and, and just 300 mile per hour almost capability just amazing uh these cars 250 miles an hour um a true supercar you even need a special key for some of them to uh, make them go that fast mercedes-benz 170v cabriolet a and the chiron 2 beautiful cars another bugatti type 23 this time 1923. You read all about it too. I like to. But these are very interesting, beautiful cars. Pokey in, give you a driver's eye view. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Jour and evolution. Always innovating, basically, and evolving. Frames hydraulic suspension. Double one time. So there you go. This is a uh, progression of the early, early automobile. Well, I say early, early. But by the 20s, you're about 20 years in. So yes, early, but. Um, Very interesting. Some trikes. 19, 1898 Kudel tricycle. <laughs> really, really neat. La Croix de la Ville La Nef. I feel like I'm in French class here. Back in French class. <laughs> Hope I got it right. Renault AX 1909, 1906 Didion Bouton El Populaire. Was it popular? I don't know. Maybe it was. I'm the head of the class. Popular. It's a good song by Nada Surf back in the 90s, if you like that sort of thing. 1904. Check out my music videos, like my video for Free Your Mind which has uh, a lot of my instrument collection. Yes, I'm a musician, songwriter. That's an original song. Plus, you can see a lot of my car collection in that video as well. Another Didion Bouton Type G, vis-a-vis. -vis. Jean Piat, 1C Voiturette. Beatles are so cool, aren't they? And look at this one. Belgian Club, Auto Trends, totally tricked out. <laughs> awesome let's see what they did inside steering wheel in the center of course like you would do a la Bugatti and uh, I'm sorry uh, McLaren actually McLaren F1 did that actually uh, Ferrari did that with a sort of a Dino the uh, three-seater it was called in Italian 
So yeah, cool to see these Bond cars here from the film and uh, playing in a Vespa and uh, motorcycle too. See what's going on here. They show you the film and they show you how it was used. Really cool. No time to die, this one. <laughs> really nice. The Royal Alley Scooter. Triumph Tiger. Love that Espada. I could look at that one all day long. <laughs> That's the Lamborghini I'd want. I do have, however, a full driving review of the Countach, which I call the truth about driving the Lamborghini Countach, because there's a lot of myth and there's a lot of uh, suppositions. So I wanted to uh, give you my first hand experience of driving the Lamborghini Countach. What a privilege. It was a great day and a great car. Also, the E-Type Jag was another bucket list car that I got to review. The Renault R5 Turbo and uh, the Ferrari Roma, Ferrari 550 Marinello also. Look for those full driving reviews elsewhere on the YouTube. This one was in No Time to Die, the movie. And uh, they show you the scenes. I like that. Very, very cool. They got the car, and they've got <laughs> the movie scenes to show you what was happening. Super cool. Production vehicles are so cool. They're often really, really, really tricked up. And, uh, you know, like the one with the bullet holes there and the beaten up uh, Range Rover. Because, you know, TV, video production, film production is tough. And uh, you got to do a lot of things to make it look cool and make it look right. And sometimes it takes... A lot of takes and uh, yeah my favorite Bond car recently was the Maserati Shamal on the most recent flick that was awesome I love that car this one was in Jamaica and broke down in the uh, movie so uh, that was its role kind of love the full convertible though how cool is that right hand drive kind of a personnel carrier configuration I like it Woo. Trying to show you the interior on that one. Right hand drive. What a beauty. <laughs> Aston Martin V8. If you're wondering who the Mercedes is that Mercedes Benz is based on, it's the uh, other partner. <laughs> he wanted his daughter named. And so that's how uh, it became Mercedes-Benz. True story. <laughs> Sometimes truth is stranger than fiction in, uh, in the world and, and certainly uh, very cool uh, things going on in the automotive world. Lots of backstories and, and interesting uh, situations that arise. Lancia Lambda, 7th Series, Carrozzeria, Garavini. Now, uh, of course, Lancia has many innovations in the automotive world. They have, uh, I believe, front-wheel drive was their uh, creation, as well as the first electrical system in a car, and there's many others. I certainly love my uh, Lancia Delta Integrale, so check out my full review of that one. Love Lancia. And... Uh, 1928 Nagant 6 Series 137 here. And, uh, wow. Okay, there's Sunbeam. Bentley Mark 6 Saloon Vandenpla. Vandenpla. Still use it these days to denote luxury in their cars. Wow, that's a beauty right there. It needs another look. The Sunbeam Alpine Roadster from 1954. One of my recent videos is an Alpine, one of Renault's new uh, companies. They brought it back from the uh, late 60s and early 70s when it had some rally success. So I have a full, re well, I have a nice video on that car. I wish I drove it, but I did not. Saw one at the Nürburgring. I have some footage of it on the Nürburgring. Great driver's cars and great to see Alpine back in the automotive world as well. 
1930 FN 1400S Sport Corsa, or a course. Chrysler Series B70, 1925. Beautiful 1949 Imperia TA8. What a beauty. That's a good looking car. Wow. More of the oldies but goodies here. I'm trying to show you every single car here. Another FN, Prince Bodwin, 1935. FN 1400, 1929. Minerva M4 from 1934. <laughs> wow. Automotive innovation, 1940 air conditioning. 1940 electrically operated windows, 1946 radial tires, 1947 all aluminum body. Then you have a hydraulic, hydraulic torque converter, 1948, rubber suspension. Starter operated by ignition key in 1949. Modern disc brakes in 1949. McPherson front suspension, optional safety belts in 1949. So early, early stuff that we now take for granted in every car. Coincidentally, not coincidentally, but interestingly, uh, disc brakes 1949. When did Ferrari actually go to disc brakes? Uh, I believe it was the mid 60s, and they waited until Jag had huge success with uh, the D type, which had disc brakes. So they put it on their, uh, I believe it was the Ferrari LM, the Le Mans, but they waited until it was proven technology. Ferrari did not like to innovate, he liked to uh, let others spend the big money developing, and then he would try to basically master it for his race cars and make them more successful. So that's what he did there. And uh, it's kind of an interesting story there. Also mid-engine, he didn't, he didn't want to go mid-engine. Le Mans, the Ferrari LM was the first mid-engine Ferrari uh, around the mid 60s. My Lotus Europa was uh, around that time too. And uh, It was uh, one of the early, early mid-engine cars. There were a few before it, but uh, it was like the, definitely in the first five of mid-engine cars. So that's pretty cool. Mine's in 1970, actually. Lotus Europa, the shooting brake. Standard Vanguard Phase 1, Moskowitz Type 400, 1951, Tatra 1600, Terrapin. And we got this nice Rolls Royce here from 1966 in a green color. It's the Silver Shadow. Yeah. Here they're showing Belgian designers and what they designed, the Z1 there. This very badass Alpha. Uh, built on the 8C. That was a really cool car. I actually drew that one. I love that one so much. What a beautiful design. Absolutely stunning. You go Belgium designers. Very, very nice. The Lotus Vs and Evora. Uh, yeah, that's nice looking. Whew. Absolutely beautiful designs there. Good job, Loewe Vermeersch. Interesting displays, the Belgian motorcycle industry, Belgian racetracks, Franker Champs, Mate, and Zolder. There's a nice Porsche 996 Turbo there. Belgian Stars, Equipe National Belge, uh, racing drivers. Really nice display. Inside here showing you all sorts of Belgian goodness. There's a lot more to see, don't worry, we're going upstairs, but everywhere you look in this museum in Brussels, Belgium, is uh, really something interesting to see. A to Z. Wow. Looky there. Prototype Imperia Hybrid. That's a good looking kind of a mashup of old and new and modern technology and uh, classic shape. I like it. I like it a lot buses and everything. Wow. Favorite of kings and stars, the Minerva Antwerpen. Coach building from carriages to cars. Antwerp is a uh, city just down the road here from Belgium. 
So uh, that's what that's about. Camille Janetsky in 1899, the first in the world, over 100 miles an hour, showed you that car earlier. How cool is that? And uh, there she is. You know, it's so funny. Uh, the bus driver today was a woman, and I've seen uh, women in Belgium driving like really heavy equipment. Uh, and it's, it's just interesting. It's, it's a little different than what we usually see in America. And uh, it's an it's a interesting world here. So very common to see women operating heavy equipment here in, uh, in Europe. And uh, it's quite interesting and quite different than what we're used to. Look at that. 1930 FN 1400S. FN Sport. Belle Jarrie's VR8 from 1934. That's a green monster. Lovely. Love it. And then, uh, but wait, there's more. <laughs> there's always more in this museum. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Cool vintage poster there. Louvre door expose on. Wow, 1900. Minerva type KK. Sampli TT Factory Racer. That's a racing bike. Who knew? Hermé Type OOUO from 1912. Nagent 1000C Torpedo Sport. Cars and bikes just keep a coming here, don't they? FN 1300S Sport. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Minerva type X. Lots of American stuff here, don't worry. 1938 Ford V8, model 81A. How about that? Want to read all about it? Of course you might. There you go. Here we go on to the next one, which is a 1940 Oldsmobile F35C. Wow. <laughs> Some stuff caught my eye back here, definitely. This one's lovely. That wood side. The thing looks like it's basically made all out of wood. So cool. This one, too. Wood figuring prominently here. Look at this. The Pacer. Wayne's World. <laughs> I don't want to date myself, but... Um, I actually used to go to lunch in one of those. One of my friends had one of those. <laughs> we would take it to lunch. Nice girl. Whatever happened to you, Meredith? Where are you now? Let us know. Hers was gray. AMC Pacer from 1975. Wow. Of course, Wayne's World made it famous, but look at the interior in these. You had like some wild cars back then. They even had like jeans, uh, jeans interiors in some of these. And just uh, amazing. There's that world record car over there. I uh, wonder if it's the actual real one. I suppose it is. 1929 Studebaker President Model FA. Studebakers were fine, fine cars. And uh, they still are. Those that survived the Amphicar, which you could drive straight into the water. Very collectible. People that live around the water love those. Uh, it's great to be able to just take a car and drive it straight into the water. Yes, 1965 Amphicar 770. Super, super cool. The car boat. 65 Ford, and it's uh, kind of a keep Ford France. So This was raced in France, I guess, right when it came out. Very, very cool. Suzuku T20 and uh, beautiful uh, second-gen Corvette 1965 C2 L78 convertible in red. Suzuki RV125 Ford Model TT. Huh? Really? Anyway, V8 uh, Cadillac 1928 341 Studebaker Hawk. Pretty cool cars there. I see these at car shows occasionally. And uh, 1955 Chevy Bel Air in pink. So cool. I love pink cars like my Citroen CX. So there you go. Looking good in pink. Check out my Barbie Dream Wagon on YouTube. 
Full review of that one. I love that car. 1935 Chrysler Airstream Convertible Coupe. What a beast. Just a two-door. Look at the wheel covers. How pretty is that? Yeah, I think it's very pretty. 1965 Lincoln Continental. Yeah, it looks familiar. A little after uh, Kennedy's. But still the same basic vehicle. This was a kind of a blue color, although it looked black uh, on that fateful day. But uh, here's another Cadillac. And a Chrysler New Yorker convertible, convertible as well. DeSoto Diplomat Custom Convertible. Chevy Nomad 1956. What a cool brown color, too. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm going with, uh, well, the Lamborghini spot is close, but I'm going with uh, this still as my uh, favorite car in the museum. Wow, so gorgeous. It's so beautiful, I want a selfie with it. Oh my God, what a great looking car. Giving you all the angles here. This is underneath the staircase to show you these cool cars. Look at them, wow. Yeah, I, I just can't get enough of this thing. I can't get enough of this whole museum, actually. It's just crazy. Incredible. The Ferrari looking great from every angle, as you'd expect. Ah, what a beauty. <laughs> so, Ghislaine Mahi and his sons, Ivan and Hans, uh, really collected all the cars. They had a thousand cars, apparently. It was started uh, right before World War II. The first one was a uh, Model T, I believe, bought uh, in Ghent for 150 francs. And uh, the war, of course, put a little problem into that, but uh, the collection kept growing. And uh, a lot of what you see here in the whole museum, actually, is part of this collection. So really cool to see unrestored cars. Uh, Maserati A6G 2000 GT Alemano. I mean, wow. <laughs> As found survivor they say barn find whatever you want to call it uh absolutely gorgeous look at the green interior <laughs> so you get a sense for how it really was discovered there Dodge. it's awesome but wow these these cars are truly masterpieces so happy to be uh seeing them and uh just getting to show you these cars as well. Incredibly cool. MGTC. <laughs> wow, look at that one. We'll get to that one, don't worry. We'll get over there. Aston Martin DB2, <laughs> Cadillac Series 62, wow, these Maseratis are amazing, 3500 right here, what do we got here, Ooh. Chrysler Ghia, wow, that's a rare bird. Want to read about it? Let's see what language they have. Hmm. Well, pick your language. <laughs> you better have uh, paid attention in class if you want to read these. Fiat 2100 Viati. Wow, look at this beauty. Porsche 356B from 1952. Definitely a museum piece there, wow. I bet, I bet there's so many people that see this and would love to restore that. Ford Anglia sports wagon. Very cool, the uh, little reverse there. BMW has something a little similar the other way, a Hoffmeister kink on all their cool cars like 3.0 CS and my 635 CSI, which is totally custom, check that one out. All blue and white, including the interior. There's a picture of some of the collection there.
Fiat Abart. I've driven a few of those while I'm over here, actually. The Fiat Abart. Old caddy, a very old caddy. <laughs> Den Minerve Oil, up to date. Wow, look at this beast. Delage D48N Anthem. Stower Type 40. Talbot Lago Salchik, 1950. And uh, Austin Atlantic A90. And Delahaye 135M Vandenbla. Wow. Voisin C24 1933. And Voisin C14. Delahaye 148L Oblin. I've got a nice picture in a convertible Delahaye from a prominent collection in the DC area, let's just say. What a lovely car that was. Art Deco styling, uh, super cool. This one is a Delahaye 135MS Gia Eagle. Wow. Tatra T87, 1943. And Warch Type 853. BMW 328 convertible. Wow, wow, wow. Auto Union 1000 SP from 1960. What a looker. MGPB. Boucher C2. Now this looks like a Bugatti Type 35, but it's a Morris Bettero MBN 501. Want to read about it? Okay, good luck. But here it is. 1959 Opal Blitz. Ginder Ale. <laughs> See it in the book see it on the wall, and then see it right in front of you. <laughs> there you go. Amilcar CGSS. Wow. Just wow. Bugatti Type 23 Brescia. Wow. 1965 Audi Union 1000 SP. Beautiful. 1998 Alfa Romeo Twin Spark. <laughs> I have driven a lot of these because I'm looking for one. I haven't found the right one. I've been close, but I've driven this exact car, basically. Not this one, but one exactly like it. And I've driven the turbo and the hardtop, which is a Ford Cedar. It's the Alfa GTV from the 90s. Love it, and I want to import one. Want to see what I'm going to import? Definitely subscribe to my channel and follow me because, uh, yes, I am importing a few cars and who knows, maybe more at this point. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do it, how to license a car and drive it around and uh, the whole process explained and made easy for you because I've been going through the trouble of trying to figure it all out. All right, let's continue. Love that Alpha GTV though. Great car. Okay, now we're into, I don't know what it says. The display is not right what it says. Anyway, 1964 Ford 12 MP4, 1964 MG Kune? County? I don't know. Whatever it is, it's super cool, I'll tell you that much. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, I'm uh, driving an MG around... Uh, Europe right now. I don't know. Is that a hint? Maybe it is a hint. 1965 Saab 96. Check out my lap on the Nürburgring and then you'll know what I'm driving. 1963 Apple Coupe and uh, Lotus Elan. If you're wondering where the Mazda Miata came from, well, take a good close look at this because Mazda basically stole this car for the Miata. 1969 Lotus Elan S4 and yeah, it's pretty much the Mazda Miata. Nice Panasports there. Mini lights, cool wheels. Looking good. Maserati Mistral 3500 GTI. Man, I love these Maseratis from this era. 
1969 Volvo 121 Amazon. I remember the advertisement for this, I think it was up in the air. We we're jumping it because they use it in a rally, of course. Here we go with a nice BMW 1600 Ti. That's the quick one. Citroen SM, beautiful car, similar to my CX in appearance. This one had a Maserati engine. It was a time when Maserati uh, was involved with Citroen. SL 230, 1964. Matra 530LX. Wow, 1971. Opel GT. I saw one of these at the Nurburgring, actually. 69 Opel GT. And here we have the 1967 DAF 38, along with a Peugeot scooter, TL10. Triumph Spitfire, Jaguar XJ6. Uh, no, it's an XJ12, sorry. Sometimes I just look and start talking. Maybe I should read first. 1971, Auto Bianchi, A111, B. S. Hmm. Pretty cool looking car. See a lot of Auto Bianchis in Italy. You can read all about it. Sort of. <laughs> nice little Berlinetta. Ooh. Rover 2200 TC. Beautiful Alfa Romeo 2600 Sprint. Zagato. Four-seater, but still quick. You see the familiar Zagato badge there? Very cool. Look at this. 1976 Porsche 911 SC police car. They got the SC a bit earlier in Europe than we did. This is actually uh, two years earlier than uh, we got in America. I have an 82 Targa. Check it out. I bought the cheapest Porsche 911 on YouTube. And I tell you what I paid for it when I bought it. Mine's an 82 Targa SOS 901. Now, of course, the Porsche was called the 901, but they had to change the name. Yes, I have a full driving review of this one, the Renault R5 Turbo. This is a Turbo 2. Uh, Mid-engine. Engine's right there. Beast of a rally car in competition with my Lancia Delta Integrale. Uh, check that one out. Wow, look at look at this over here. Ooh. Talbot Matra Marina 1.6. What a cool looking car. Similar to like the Volkswagens they made in Brazil in terms of looks, I think. And that to me is a good thing. I think it's the SP or something. What a beautiful car. And this one is a beauty as well. Look at that interior. Ooh. Oops. Sorry. Here's me face. There we go. 1980 Porsche 924 Carrera GT. If you want to see a lot of cool Porsches, check out my review of the Porsche Factory Museum as well as the Mercedes Factory Tour, both around Stuttgart, Germany, where I was prior on this trip. Wow, I see a car I'm pretty excited about. 1971 Bizzarini AMX3 Spider. I'm pretty excited about this one. Certainly. Bizzarini was a Ferrari uh, engineer. They had a bit of a falling out, so he started making his own cars in that famous Ferrari feud. Renault Le Car R5 Automatic. We called this Le Car in the U.S. I guess they called it the R5. And hence the R5 Turbo over there. This one right here. Lancia, Monte Carlo, Scorpion, uh, whatever it was called. Uh, very cool. 1980. Mid-engined Lancia. I had a Zagato, which had the same wheels exactly, and some of the same parts. So, it's really cool. I always wanted one of these, but they had problems. They had problems with the brakes, and uh, so I never took the plunge, really. Came close many times, but I had a Zagato. Now I have the Lancia Delta Integrale. I've always loved these, though. What a cool-looking car. Lancia Beta Monte Carlo Series 2. Very cool. I guess the closest thing we had to it was a Fiat X19, but still, this is far cooler if you ask me. 
Also called the scorpion, I think, in some parts of the world. Porsche 928 S, 1980. I have a 78 five-speed manual, so check that one out on YouTube. The Miata, 1988. This is like the first one. This is VIN 26, so a uh, very early car. I remember when these came out. It was 1989 in the U.S., and uh, everybody wanted one. There was a A, B, and C package. I think you could basically get it stripped down so you could put your own wheels on it and go racing or something like that. But, yeah, they came in blue, white, or red early on. Then they came out with the black and the green, British Racing Green with tan special editions and some blue ones. Uh, but it was just red, white, and blue at first. So, yeah, Mazda Miata taken from the Lotus Elan, which I showed you earlier, the shape. You can see it. Uh, what a great looking car, the first series, the NA Miata. 1993 BMW 850 CSI. Yes, I have a full driving review of this. Check it out on YouTube. And also newer Miatas too. The BMW 850 CSI. 850 means it's a V12. 840 was the eight cylinder. So cool car, four seater, and I think one of the best looking BMWs of the day. Technically, they were a bit tough, but uh, really cool cars. Acura NSX, uh, racing Chevrolet Cruze, Ferrari uh, 3, let's call it a 3, 355, <laughs> right in there. Race car, uh, FN 1300 Sport, and 1976 Toge SC 204, that's pretty cool. Wow, cool. wow, this is awesome. Look at this thing. This one is really cool. Villante Grand Defy Steve Warson. I guess that's a local Belgian thing? I know, it's American driver. I don't know. I don't know what it is. If you know what this is, please let me know in the comments because I love it. There it is right there. Say a breathe. Well, I'm not going to sit here and read all the French right now, but uh, I like it. I definitely like it. Yeah. I guess he's a character. Kind of like Speed Racer. I guess that's what's going on here. Cool. Okay, Corvette fans, it's a moment you've all been waiting for. 70th anniversary of the Corvette. And they have quite a display here for it. Look at all this stuff. White and red. I actually have been looking at one of these and uh, kind of on the fence about it. I like it. It's original Corvette colors, white with red, and a convertible. The thing I don't like about the convertible is it does take away some of the storage space here. But, uh, okay, I'm nitpicking a bit. See, there's the original white and red one. We have a guy over there posing with it. So yeah, we'll get back to the Corvette display. Let me show you these real quick. The D-Type Jag. This is the one with the uh, disc brakes that I was talking about earlier. Uh, 57 D-Type. Bugatti. Wow. Look at that Bugatti Type 35 back there. 1926. Just think about that. Remember what other cars looked like in 1926? That was space age, kind of like they are today. 250 miles an hour, you know, just the ultimate speed and just way over the top. Omega racing car. There you go. We'll display over here for sure. One of the best looking race cars, I think. This D-Type Jag. So cool. See? <laughs> Amazing. Looks like it was just uh, coming off the track. Really cool. It's awesome. Look at this Corvette here. Nice color. Like it. 70 years of Corvette. 1954 Corvette C1. Came out in 53 and a half. So uh, this is an early one. White with red, as you see. And this one also white with the red. That's the traditional historic Corvette colors. And they got it going on here for sure. C2, 1963. 
Stingray split window. Only made that year, the split window. Uh, there you go. See? Split window. <laughs> Another view of that beautiful Lancia. C1, 53 to 62, that's the display. This, of course, is a C3. Full driving review of that elsewhere on YouTube. Please do check that out. They got Corvette models, too, down there. What a beauty. Absolutely. Being uh, from America, of course, I see a lot of these at car shows, even the early ones. But still, it's, it's interesting to see it over here in Brussels, Belgium, traveling around Europe. You do see Corvettes. Uh, I saw some at the Nürburgring, so that's pretty cool. But uh, they're certainly not as common over here as they are in America. Chevron. Nice little Corvette model display here. Look at that. That one is super cool. See? Ooh. Two thousand three C five, fiftieth anniversary, and yeah, nineteen eighty eight C four. In case you were wondering, I didn't identify that one. Two thousand seven Corvette Z zero six, and a two thousand fifteen C seven Z zero six. Strange. Uh, they don't have a C eight here. <laughs> wow, it's kind of strange. Not that I saw. C8s are all the rage in America right now, certainly. Mid-engine Corvette, finally. They've been talking about it for ages. But the Cor Corvette, definitely America's sports car, and uh, proud to see them here in Brussels, Belgium, at Auto World for the 70th anniversary of Corvette display. Super cool. Oh, more models, too. Look at this. The Mako Shark there. That's my favorite. I love that one. Look at that. There's one that's at the uh, Simeon Museum, and that, that one is really cool, too. It was a special body Corvette. He had a rare Corvette, and he didn't want to drive it on the track, but he wanted to track it, so he made a different body for the car. <laughs> that's pretty cool. 2004 Porsche 996 GT3 RSR. That is the most of the first-gen water-cooled Porsche that you can get. I have a 996 Carrera 4 Cabriolet, but this is an all-out race version, super rare, incredible. Beast of a BMW 3.0 CSL. There's the Hoffmeister kink I was talking about before. Whoosh, see? It's a shape there. Seen on the 3.0 CS right here, and also on my 635 CSI and many, many, many BMWs. Definitely a design signature. Rene Bonnet Aerojet LM6 from 1964. Wow. Here's an Alpine M63, similar to one that I just saw at a local racetrack. Check out a vintage race, the Jefferson 500, and I have a, a winged mid-60s, I think 66 Alpine. This is the M63. Like I said, they're producing Alpine sports cars again with Renault as the parent, and it's so good to see. I love these. Ooh, so cool. These are some amazing cars. Peugeot race car looks awesome. Peugeot makes a darn fine looking car, I must say. Some of the, some of the more striking cars I see in Europe are uh, Peugeots, and sometimes Renaults too. French have a flair for design, and uh, that's why I have a Citroen, I love it. 1971 Ford Capri Group Two. Uh, also at the Jefferson 500, I have an example of a very cool racing Ford Capri. That one's awesome, too. What a stance. Look at that beast. Whew. Really fast racing cars. I love that series of race cars where they're basically like the, uh, the regular car sold to the public, but on steroids, basically. 911 2.0 Cup from 1965. That's the first year of the 911. 356 ended and the 911 begun, so there you go. Really rare 1965 version. Ooh. 
just love this sport and competition display. Oh my God, look at this. 550 Spider, yeah, that's the James Dean one, the one he was killed in. I have a review of the Beck Spider. Love this one. This is one of the most beautiful cars to me. Lancia Fulvia. And this one is the uh, HF Fanalone 1600 from 1969 slash 1970. Look at that. Full rally setup. These things were quick. Front wheel drive, but still, uh, they did very well in rallies. Pegaso Z102 Inasa Petrables. Petrables. 1954. Read all about it. <laughs> Picasso, wow. That is beautiful. Ferdinand Porsche Heritage, Auto World Brussels. Guess that's a past show that they did. Look at this. Citroën, Citroën DS. Ah, uh, the DS21 or 1.9. Uh, 21. Wow. Alfa Romeo Montreal. Here we have a bone stock BMW 3.0 CS. The original Volkswagen Golf, 1975. Wow, wow, wow. I don't think I've ever seen one of these in person. The Lancia Hyena concept car from 1993. Basically, it was a Lancia Delta Integrale, and they just put a more racy body on it and made it a coupe and uh wow yeah i would say this is a a top 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 car on my list here at the museum i like that one downstairs that's my favorite old car but this is my favorite newer gen car even though it's not very new 1993. read all about it here <laughs> yes another selfie moment have you smashed that like button and subscribed yet turn on notifications i hope you have Idle Design Aztec. I've only seen this in uh, magazines before or books. So really cool to actually see it. Oh my God. Just absolutely amazing. I'm gonna step over here, why not? Look at this thing. Look at this. This museum is very chill. I mean, there's not like people all around watching you and uh, Europe is just different. I think they uh, they just tend to expect a certain level from, from the public that comes through and uh, I think uh, people respect that. Aztec, look at this, oh my god. And a hyena, along with the uh, Lexus. LC500, this is a pretty new car actually. You see these on the road, there's a couple that come to my local cars and coffee, so it's pretty cool to see them, but look at this. Wow. Audi power, 250 horsepower. Got all the specs on the side there. Wow, that is just amazing. And two different steering wheels. Go figure. <laughs> wow, it smells really interesting. You can definitely smell that material from the interior still, which is kind of interesting because it's such a older car now. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Can't see in this one at all. I guess they, uh, maybe it's, it, it's, it was never, uh, this one maybe was not actually built up inside. Maybe this is just a design study. Wow. Back to the lovely 3.0 CS. 1974. Five-speed manual, blue interior. This is a great car. R080. There's the Montreal. It's a beautiful Alpha Montreal at the uh, Ferrari dealership in Naples, Florida. I give you a tour of that. What a lovely addition to that one. Light blue. There's a bunch of like blue cars there all together that you wouldn't think would be at the Ferrari dealership, but they are. NSU R080 from 1972. I believe these had rotary engines in them. Porsche 912, which is a four-cylinder 911. Looks like an Alvis. But it's not, it's an Alfa Romeo. 2500 Super Sport. I have a video on Alvis 
take a look at that and you'll see what I'm talking about. Here's some of these Belgian designers. Hannard X77. This is a Citroen 7A from 1934. 1925 Hanomag 210 Comey Sprott. <laughs> 1931 Austin 7 SS. These were uh, cars that a lot of uh, English people souped up back in the day. So there you go. I guess Germans did it too. So that was a super sport. <laughs> Voisin C14, Voisin C14 Charmant. Nagent Type 7000J. And a Norton. Lots to see here. You can spend a lot of time just looking at all the models they have on the walls. Look at the BMW art cars. Very cool. There's the Warhol one. Lichtenstein, pop artists, doing the cars. I loved it. Lichtenstein, uh, uh, all sorts of just really cool art cars from BMW, all in a case there. The Pink Pig. Wow. Gotta have a pink Cadillac in your car museum, right? 59 cars exhibited by Auto World, one, two, three, four, cars of rock and roll. Yeah, there's nothing more rock and roll than a pink Cadillac, right? 1959, actually. Yep, I said. Fins were in Moto Guzzi, 1100 Sport Corsa, Audi R8, and more Moto Guzzi's. A wheel drive quattro eight cylinder here notice it looks like a lamborghini because yeah it pretty much is similar to the lamborghini yallardo longer wheelbase jaguar 1972 e type v12 borg ward isabella coupe 1957 JPW prototype 1946 and 1954 Bugatti Brown. Pretty cool architecture in here, too. And an Audi Quattro concept car carved out of wood, 1991. What an incredible car museum! Art of World. Brussels, Belgium. Woo. Okay, so there you have it. Auto World, Brussels, Belgium. I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed walking around and showing it to you. Smash that like button, subscribe. Drive in Ivan Katz, leave off the, D, the G. And uh, you can find me there on Instagram and also my YouTube channel here. Also, check me out at uh, The Real Drive in Ivan on TikTok. And... Uh, also, at Ivan Katz on Twitter, but do just search any car in Drive and Ivan on YouTube and you'll find my car reviews, want to know what I drive, search what does Drive and Ivan drive, check out my Free Your Mind music video, elsewhere on YouTube that has my guitar collection and a lot of my car collection in it. And again, search Drive and Ivan in any car, and thanks for watching, I'm Drive and Ivan.